Okay, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I've decided that I was going to share with you guys maybe just one or two more poems. One of them is long, so I'm going to do it in two, only two poems here. From the Down in the Dirt, September, December 2021 issue collection book, Stardust in Hand, for those who knew um, that this is based on an open mic space that ran in Austin. You might be wondering why I'm wearing an Illinois shirt, the Illini. Um, actually, I just got out recently from the last time I was in Chicago, and I would raz the host, or any host of any open mic, whenever I could, by sharing something that didn't relate to Austin, Texas, whenever I came here. But, anywho, this was a magazine that has started um, in the Chicagoland area, is now in Austin, and I'm going to share with you two poems. This first one is a long one, and toward the end of the book. And this one is actually titled Tito a Keto Storyline. It was written on the 21st of this December for National Short Story Day. So you're brave now. Keto a Storyline. When a young woman, a, a researcher, a logical woman, was a scientist in Seattle, she led a research group in a pharmaceutical company to more success in AIDS drugs for the world. Despite her successes, she learned how she still had to jump through both corporate and religious hoops to successfully accomplish her work. Then, out of the blue, a male friend from college, a man now living in New York with money and connections in a well-known publishing company, he came to her town on a business trip. They rekindled their friendship and they suddenly realized that although they were different at the core, they were really the same. And they finally found themselves in love. So, as she worked and discovered from colleagues around the country that the government was stopping their progress with AIDS research, her love, the man she fell for, was attacked at her grand corner of Central Park one night. And in the process was injected with a needle and he quickly developed HIV. This was her work, and this seemed like far too deliberate of an effort to stop her from succeeding. But she refused to sit back like a helpless maiden while everything falls apart. So she made connections, and who knows, she may have talked to too many conspiracy theorists, but one one told, when one once told her of an AIDS being a government plan to eradicate some segments of society, they actually gave her locations of where they kept the ultimate cure. Now, this woman was a researcher, a scientist, but she couldn't let this injustice from her government continue. So she worked out. She bought a gun. She practiced and quickly came up with a plan. She took time off work, something she never did and she collected her cash to make her way across the country with no paper trail and avoided attacks in her life until she was able to find a small sample of the cure. She found only enough to save her love and without proof of where the sample came from, her hand seemed tied behind her back and after all this work, she still didn't know how to bring the government's wrongdoings to light. After risking her life, the only thing she could do was save her love. But she kept the original vial and planned to extract just enough of this miracle to help her move forward with the vaccine. Because if she couldn't show the world who the real enemy was, she could at least do her damnedest to help the countless others who would otherwise be killed from a cruel and heartless government. And, and no. This short story might not have a happy ending, but sometimes happy endings aren't the way life is. The, the plot still had twists and turns, philosophical conflict, and of course, a love story. And it proves that even when there seems to be no hope in sight, it is possible to find a way to make things work in the end, which is exactly the way life should be. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I think that was a longer poem. So I'm just going to skip to the end here for share one more poem with you from this book. 
Stardust in hand, an issue collection book from uh, Down in the Dirt magazine. I'll try to match my hand to be like the the star nebula that was there that NASA photographed. That if you see it in color, it's a blue colored hand looking at like fiery red nebula. It's the wackiest, coolest thing. Check it out online. Even if you don't buy the issue, you can find it at Amazon or Scars of TV. Um, I'm going to share with you one more poem from the end of this book. Ha ha. And it is also related to an event. Um, it was written on the 19th of December for the date of the departure of the space shuttle to repair the Hubble telescope on December 19th of 1999. So that's what this is written for and it's called Explorers at Heart. We are all explorers at heart. When searching beyond what we can conquer, we say, we say oh, okay, then let us learn, because as I said, we are all explorers at heart. You see, we explore until our bodies can't take anymore, so we use our big brains to make technology explore for us. You know, like those machines become our slaves. <laughs> Good thing they haven't mastered emotion and rebel. <laughs> so sure. We place our telescopes in outer space to see more, to learn more, to understand more. And of course, our human technology will inevitably ultimately fail. So let's see if we can master space just enough, just to correct our own mistakes. Because yeah, we realize the stakes are now so much higher than when we first explored, but come on. We're still bumbling idiots, taking one turn, no two, maybe three, just so we can continue to explore. So, let's do this, even in the last spatial flight of the 20th century, just to make our machines work for us as we continue to explore. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was your second and last poem I'm going to read from you from this Down in the Dirt, Down in the Dirt QR code, um, issue collection book from uh, September to December 2021, titled Stardust in Hand, Stardust in Hand, do, 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 do. sorry, I have to pose like an idiot. <laughs> I hope you enjoy these readings. I hope you get out and share with people when you can. I Hope that you remain creatively inclined um, for us poets continue to remain poetically inclined. Um, one bit of good news, my open mic that I ran in Chicago and every other week for over half a decade, um, weekly and every other week, um, later brought to the Gallery Cabaret in Chicago that I had to hand over to Dave Getchick before I left, um, then stopped because of pandemic. I came back to visit, I went, did a feature night there, had a great time, and that's where I met Doc, who is a guy who is taking over the Poetry Open Mic on Wednesdays, this time every week of the year, not every other week like I had, which is so double plus awesome. So even if he's not naming it after that, it is wonderful to know that poetry is continuing at one of the founding places for poetry in Chicago at the Gallery Cabaret. Um, it is great to see that it's back. And congrats for that, and hopefully the next time I come to visit, maybe I can do some feature reading there as well, because I miss my second home, my, my first home, <laughs> because Austin's having to become my second one, because I'm forced to live here. <laughs> Sorry, you guys. I know. Community poetry. Yay. Rock on. I should give props for that. And for people like Tom Woodruff, who ran this open mic. I hope everyone is remaining safe. I hope everyone is remaining creatively inclined, poetically inclined, and, uh, Stay strong, we will get together again, and we will be okay. And um, thank you so much for listening, and I look forward to seeing each and every one of you and sharing with you all again very, very soon. Thank you all so very much. You guys are the best. <laughs> thank you.